Um, and I, I'm not on this slide, but I'm just going to introduce these guys and the project that they're working on very briefly. Um, so uh, they're part of a project uh, which is funded by the University of Manchester's Learning Through Research Fund, which is a uh, pot of money that's designed for undergraduate students to have an opportunity to do a piece of original research that's not tied in with their dissertation, and not tied in with any courses that they're taught about either, so to do something completely unique and different. I'm quite interested in training, and particularly in undergraduate training in field archaeology, and um, as part of that I was sort of thinking about how people who are training, whether they're undergraduates or whether they're uh, people from the community, what they're, how they feel, whether, they, whether they're aware of, of the fact that they're producing new knowledge as they, as they train. Uh, and so I sort of put together a broad outline of this. And uh, then these guys came on board, and they're all uh, second year University of Manchester archaeology students. And uh, they've sort of helped <coughs> design the study and design the questions, and we've sort of analysed and crunched the numbers, as it were. So we set up an online survey which was distributed by 15 different uh, archaeology departments and also on the Badger website as well. Looking for David to thank him, but uh, and um, we also had a kind of focus group as well, where we sort of got more anecdotal information. So it was it was uh, about 100, 104 people responded to our survey, and uh, I'm going to hand over to these guys now to present the results and to think a little bit more about how uh, students' uh, experiences of training can help inform the way we think about how different audiences engage with with and produce new knowledge when they're training. Hi, yeah. Thanks, Helen. As mentioned, 104 students from around the UK completed the survey we published late in February, where we asked them to recall their experience of a university-led excavation. From this survey, we noticed some discrepancies when asking students whether they thought they contributed to the interpretation of the site. Therefore, in this section, I will be talking about why interpretation matters, student engagement with interpretation, and lastly I will reflect on the issue of students' awareness of making interpretations. <coughs> so what do we mean by interpretation? Well, anything that produces new knowledge, from taking a photograph, filling out a context sheet, and identifying a feature. As Hodder says, interpretation begins at the travel's edge. This means having students engage in interpretive acts is important for gaining a greater understanding of the site, for a more holistic learning process and connecting theoretical and practical aspects of archaeology. Today's students, who are the future of archaeology, bring with them the most important ingredients to our field, which is diversity. Diversity, diversity and a difference in age, different ethnic and social backgrounds, and perhaps most importantly, we bring with them new and fresh ideas and approaches to the interpretive process on and off the field. Out of the 104 students who took part in the survey, 99 students enjoyed the fieldwork excavation, which is great. However, the results show that five students did not enjoy the fieldwork experience. Strikingly, all were in the first year of the excavation. First year of the degree, <coughs> sorry. This prompts us to ask, why is this? Is it a lack of interest and experience in archaeology? Is it a lack of clear instruction? Or perhaps archaeology is just not the right career for these five students? Interestingly, finding an artefact appears to have had a massive impact on students' enjoyment on site. 86% of those who did enjoy the excavation made a significant find, compared to only 20% among those who didn't, did not enjoy the excavation. Hence, discovering an artefact affects students' engagement during field work. This means that, from a student perspective, finding an artefact leads to a better learning and overall positive experience. However, archaeology is not all about finding exotic and impressive artefacts. And so, 
And so it seems that this idea must be made explicit in the teaching of archaeology. That finding an artifact, sorry, finding a feature can sometimes be just as important, if not more important, than an artifact. To exemplify this brief discussion, one student who agreed that excavation was student focused received clear instruction and had made a significant find. Also said they did not enjoy the fieldwork. This tells us that we can't aim for 100% student satisfaction, as archaeology is not for everyone. In the survey, we asked whether or not students felt they contributed to the interpretation of the site, and the responses were quite startling, with most of the respondents covering first, second, third, and master's level, saying they either did not know whether they contributed or disagreed that they did. Comparing these responses with the questions, did you take photographs, fill out context sheets, and complete site drawings, it became apparent that most students had indeed done all these things. This then raises perhaps the most poignant issue of all. If students are not actually aware that they are making interpretations, could the teaching of archaeology lack a clear and simple approach? If students are not aware of the skills they possess, this could be quite problematic for the future of archaeological engagement. The results of the survey begs the question of, are students being failed by their institutions? Further research will need to be conducted to reflect on and answer this question. What the results make us wonder is what will it be like in the future if students are unable to communicate interpretive acts to members of, pu of the public and volunteers alike when and if they enter the archaeological profession. To explore this further, we have found that there are some barriers to engagement and interpretation we need to overcome, the most significant being personal relationships. In other words, who affects who on site? Matthew will discuss this in the next section. Thanks. Um, yeah, and just before I, would, I go into who affects who on site, I just wanted to make the point that, and going off what's been said earlier on uh, today, that uh, talking about methods of public engagement and engagement uh, with the community, that um, people forget that sometimes we are members of the community, that we live and we work in the community, um, and obviously we're, we're, we're paying to be on site, uh, paying to be there, but. We are just members of the community who have an active interest in archaeology uh, and at the same time there's members of uh, our, our peers at university who have worked commercially before or who are working commercially at the moment alongside their studies so um, some of the categories aren't always so clear cut. Um, yeah so <clears throat> on archaeological sites that are student focused there's a hierarchy between the students, the supervisors and the uh, dig director. I mean, this has to be the case to facilitate the learning process. But we wanted to find out uh, whether students felt that they were able to communicate their interpretations with the supervisors. Uh, and in fact, 78% of our survey said that they were, which was really good. But we wanted to find out what was going on with the other 22%. Um, so one student <coughs> from the free format uh, box of our survey said that there was no opportunity for students to contribute their own interpretations of the site or offer ideas. Uh, an individual on our site who did offer their own interpretations was criticised for doing so in private discussions and considered rude for giving an opinion that differed with the site directors. So this is quite problematic, but, uh, especially you know if, if, if a volunteer wanted to uh, communicate their ideas as well. Um, <clears throat> so we wanted to find out also who, uh, how many students actually were interested in con uh, contributing to the overall interpretation of the site as well. Um, we wondered whether students were just going on excavations because it was part of their course, uh, you know, because it was a compulsory part, uh, whether they'd really given much thought about the overall interpretation of the, of the excavation that they were going to go on. But actually over 80% said that they, were, that they did want to make a contribution, which was really good. Uh, but ultimately only around a third felt that they actually did in the end make a contribution to the, to the interpretation of the site. And about another further third said that they weren't sure whether they had or not. Uh, so we wondered whether this was because they felt like they weren't being listened to on site, or as Stephanie had said, uh, whether they just weren't aware that the actions that they'd taken part in on site were interpretive or not. Um, <clears throat> and when we... Oops, sorry. I've done that thing again. 
Uh, um, when we focused further uh, on gender, we also found some uh, interesting things. Sorry. Sorry. Not taking it. <coughs> no, no, it's fine. You're very, there we go. Um, uh, we found that actually more, uh, more female students uh, felt that they wanted to uh, communicate their interpretations of the site than male students. Um, but actually less female students feel, felt like they actually did. Uh, and almost 10% more females weren't sure whether they'd contributed. Uh, at the same time, almost 10% less female students felt like they received uh, sufficient instruction on site. Uh, and I mean, this is, I suppose, a fairly small survey, but it still come from uh, a wide range of different archaeological sites, and this was kind of like a running theme. Um, uh, one student from, again, from the free format textbox of our survey said, that there were some tasks which were assigned to just male or just female students on her excavation, uh, which bothered me. I felt capable of all the work that was happening at the site and would have liked the chance to prove it. So these survey results suggest that communication on site is possibly gendered. Um, the way that instructions are given and understood can be different for males and females. Um, and uh, some of this has suggested that possibly our female diggers even less visible than male diggers in some cases. Um, <clears throat> one thing that we didn't really consider before carrying out this piece of research, even for myself, Leo and Stephanie, who've been on uh, student-focused excavations with our university, was that as well as the hierarchy between students, uh, supervisors and dig directors, there's often also an unofficial hierarchy between the students that are on site as well. Um, this was especially, you know, the longer excavations that are four or five weeks and people are living together and camping together perhaps at the, at the same time. Um, <clears throat> this was um, positive most of the time. Um, students with more experience can help uh, student, students with less, less experience support their engagements, support, you know, support their interpretations of the site. Um, sometimes it's easier for a student uh, with less experience to ask a peer for what their thoughts are or you know, for help than go to a supervisor. Um, but there was also negatives to this as well. One student from our focus group said that um, she felt that there were tensions between different <coughs> groups of students on site uh, and the interpretations from one group uh, weren't as valued from, uh, as interpretations of another group of students and she almost felt like they were in irritation. Um, this was on an excavation where there was a changeover of students about halfway through, a couple of weeks into the excavation uh, and she felt like the students that had been there since the beginning, uh, their interpretations were more value valued than the ones that kind of arrived on site a couple of weeks later. Uh, and if that's what she felt like, then we wondered how it would feel for a volunteer or a member of the community who'd come in for just a day or two, you know. Um, so I'll hand over to Leah just to summarize what we've said and also to, to uh, tell you about uh, some of the suggestions that have come through this survey and through our focus group for improvement in the future. <coughs> okay, so to summarize, we wish to say that being a part of the interpretive process is important for students and excavations. However, we found that there were certain barriers to this, such as student awareness that they were interpreting, lack of communication, and other factors such as site dynamics. Everything that we have done within the study is relevant to the future of public training in the archaeological field because the way in which students are taught now is very similar to how the public may be trained or taught in the field, so the same insights apply. Also, uncovering our own history is for everyone, and so for both students and the public to be aware that they are a part of this process may enhance not just archaeology but how they engage with it. Lastly, students who are learning now will be the people participating in future public involvement once they enter the professional world. And thus, it is vital that they have a sense of understanding of their role on site now so that future archaeological engagement can be enhanced. To conclude, we would like to feedback some best practice suggestions from the students who part of our study. First one is discussion and communication. Students suggested that they had wished they had been included more within the interpretation of the site, even if it were just to discuss the progress on a regular basis. However, through communication and discussion, students can be shown that they are indeed producing new knowledge. The second one is value and encouragement. Students must feel valued and encouraged on site. To, just so they can express both their interpretations and interests during the excavations. Also, organisation of the fieldwork, a, a 
appears to be a vital element, ensuring that students get the most out of their excavations as possible. This can include ensuring that all of the equipment is present on site at all times, and that tasks are assigned to students, ensuring that they train in a more, more than one aspect of excavating. While many did recognise that there are some time constraints on site, it was suggested that even a task order would have been beneficial to student training. One last point I would like to make is, as Mark mentioned before, with one of the female participants who was not able to, in some, to participate in some tasks, even though she felt capable of doing so, thus ensuring that all tasks are allocated equally between the students can also be a really important factor. <coughs> If you wish to learn more about our findings, we do have a poster, but we couldn't actually put it up. But we do have it with us. Carry um, it round later. <laughs> <laughs> um, <Sandwich board>. <laughs> <laughs> we also have a blog and a Twitter page, which you can also visit. Thank you for listening.